Miami's always been the team looking to add superstar talent. And with groups like Milwaukee and Philadelphia unexpectedly struggling, would the Heat trade players like Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero to get an established superstar? We'll debate that on today's Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg, editor at allyoucanheat.com, here with David Ramel. However you're tuning in on YouTube, your favorite podcast app. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Got a bunch of stuff, fun stuff to get to today, including some hypothetical trade ideas, lineup changes, and some big picture questions about the Heat's future. But first... Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code Locked On NBA and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollars bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Also, your favorite podcast now is a newsletter introducing the Locked On Heat Daily Newsletter, one stop for ultimate team and league coverage, delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com, and start your day with the all-new free Locked On Heat newsletter. We are playing a game today called, would you? And it's simple. I'm going to frame a scenario and I'm going to ask, would you? Does that make sense, David? I think I, I'm starting to get the gist of it. I, it might take me a couple of rounds to kind of get my feel, but I sure. think uh, I, the, you know, the name sums up a lot of the detail there. Uh, I think I could parse my way through it. Uh, we'll start with a preseason opener. So you're at a restaurant. You order. You you and your wife are out at a restaurant having a very nice meal. It's not like you know. It, it's fancy, right? You're not at you know McDonald's here, but you're in a nice restaurant. And the waiter brings out the wrong dish. Would you say something, or would you just eat the dish? Oh, it depends on what the dish is, right? I mean, is it is it an upgrade over what mm. I'd ordered? Um. Okay, let's make it yeah, simple. Like, let's say you ordered. Am I thinking like, too much maybe about this? A side. No, no, maybe oh, okay. yeah, a little. No, I think it's a fair question because I, when I was asking you the scenario, I was like, yeah, you know what? If it was just completely different than when I was like, dude, like I don't even eat fish. Like, what are you doing? I eat fish, but you know, right? I mean. Like, right. but like, what? Like, maybe you were really looking forward to the cream spinach at this in particular restaurant, and they brought you green beans instead or something. I don't know. No, yeah, I'd, I'd ask for a packet. I'd be, yeah, I say it politely, but you know, I say, oh, actually, I ordered this. Right? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't think that's being. Uh, a jerk or anything like that. I, you know, I, I feel like it's important to have conversations with servers and stuff like that. It's not like sure. they're like foreign alien people or anything like that. It's just, you know, they're, they're, they're doing a job and they take your order and sometimes they make mistakes and mistakes happen as long as you're have polite. I, I, yeah, I think, I, I think I try to be as polite as possible with anybody that I'm dealing with at, at a, a human level. The, my, the biggest pet peeve that I think I do that I notice uh, at restaurants is I say sorry when I ask for things. And I'm like, why am oh. I apologizing? I'm going to tip them. I'm like, I'm sorry. You brought me the wrong food. Would you mind fixing your mistake? Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, don't I, I sorry. do. I've don't tip the before. polite. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, sorry. Sorry. I, you brought me the wrong thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, like... What am I, Canadian? Like, I don't need to do this. Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you brought me the... You, I'm sorry. I want a gravy on my French fries for some reason. Um <laughs> All right, so let's get to the Miami Heat stuff. David, would you trade Bam Adebayo for Joel Embiid? And we're bringing oh. this up because there's a lot of drama coming out of Philadelphia. So the Heat clocked the 76ers last night, and the Sixers, in response, have an hour-long team meeting. And the vibes are just not good in Philadelphia right now. Joel Embiid is not the player that they needed them to be. Tyrese Maxey is openly challenging him, according to some, the, the reporting around this situation, saying that he's not even showing up to stuff on time for the 76ers. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I think it's a fair question to ask. Would you trade Bam Adebayo with all the struggles that he's had offensively to start the season for Joel Embiid? Uh, can I just say before I even answer that, I feel really bad for Caleb Martin. Like he got his payday and it was less than he wanted. He, like he could have been enjoying so much more money for a situation which he would have been absolutely comfortable with here in Miami. And instead he's gone over to this that crap storm over in Philadelphia for less. I mean, money. I don't like, feel that, that is, bad. I, I get it. I get it. Eight, the, the, nine yeah. million dollars. He'll be OK. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I guess it's a pretty you could dry your tears with thousand dollar bills. Yeah. And that's OK. But it's still, it's just, 
he doesn't deserve this. Um, no. The idea of Bam for Joel is interesting because there's so much. There are so many pros and cons for either. Like Bam might have a ceiling. Bam might be just a glorified role player, and certainly a lot of the fan base sees that or believes that after what they've witnessed this year, when he's had the opportunities to take his game to another level as an offensive player and simply has it. But you counter that with the fact that he does almost everything well else well. Like he's a model citizen. He's a cornerstone, a building block for any franchise around the league. He shows up on time. Defense, shows up on time. Always <laughs> breaks hearts. You've never heard anything disparaging about Pam and Abayo. He loves his mom. Like he is, he's a, a pillar of the community. And you never have to ask anything of him because he's always ready and willing to give it 110% every time. But you counter that with, well, Joel Embiid is Joel Embiid, an MVP layer level player, a guy who can score falling asleep, will flop his way to 20 points, and, you know, is a, a great all-time player. I, I would not. I can't. I cannot. I cannot stomach Embiid's game. And given the fact that we're probably going to be seeing less and less of him over the course of his career, I don't know that Miami's history with salvaging careers is enough to take Embiid and make him into a 65 game player. I don't think he'll ever approach that mark or anywhere near it for the rest of his career. And that's a sad thing to say, but I think it's also the reality that while as good as he might be, if he can't get those foul calls because the league has changed the way the officiating works, he's just no longer as effective as he once was. And as good and as talented as he might be in some regards, I, I would not make that trade. No, I can't. I don't feel comfortable I doing it. I don't think I don't know how you would be comfortable doing it, right? I Easy. Mean, Somebody's gonna say he's an MVP. He's got thirty points. You can go to him, and he's gonna score fifty. Miami hasn't somebody had could a say point. it, but if, if you're a front office, if you're Pat Riley, Adam Simon, Andy Ellsberg, your your job is you know essentially on the line if you make a deal like that, right? Like your job oh, depends yeah. on nailing. That's a swing. I don't know how you're comfortable. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put all my dominoes in that basket. Like I don't know that yeah. you're. How, I don't know how you could possibly do that. He's he the you said he might not ever play 65 games again. He's pretty much said he'll never play. He, he's not thinking about reaching that mark again. He's not he's talking about never playing back to backs again in his career, how you know playing games doesn't matter as much in the regular season. And I get that he's holding out for the playoffs and things like that. And I and I do understand that. And there's a version of it that looks great. There's a version of it, quite frankly, it looks like a lot like what Jimmy Butler looked like, you know, a couple seasons ago and the year before that. But he's a couple months away from being 31 years old. He'll be 31 years old yeah. by the end of the season. But man, doesn't it feel like that body is like 41 years old? Like that, 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 that's some wear and tear on that body. And Bam on the flip side is 27. And he feels very firmly 27, like right in the middle of his physical prime. And while I, Joel Embiid has averaged 30 plus points in each of the last three seasons, he was averaging a point a minute last year, which is a bananas pace. Okay, there is when that guy is at his best, he is arguably the best player in the league. He is that good. Mm. But how much more like are if are, are do we think that you're gonna get that Joel and beat again? And if so, how often? And for how many more years? I think we're kind of entering a different phase of Embiid's career. And if that's true, if he's not and and I and I, I heard this uh framing on the Bill Simmons podcast, so I'm gonna steal it from him, but I thought it was a really good one. Like is Orlando Magic, Los Angeles Lakers Shaq. Like we've seen that version of Embiid already, probably. So is this is this Embiid going to be Miami Heat Shaquille O'Neal, where there's a couple of more big time years where he could be a cornerstone of a championship winning team, or are we talking more like Phoenix Suns Shaq coming up? Are we entering that stage of Embiid's career? Because if you if we are, you don't want anything to do with that. And by the way, Embiid just signed an enormous contract. That contract yeah. is going to look rough. Like, I, I don't think there's any way. I don't know when. I don't know if it'll be this year or next year or by the end of it. But at some point, that thing is going to be a stranglehold on your cap sheet. And it's going to be really difficult to build. So I don't know. Because if you trade Bam for Embiid, you, you're basically, if you're the Miami Heat, you're saying we are going all in with Embiid and Jimmy Butler at 34 years old? This that That's the plan? And that's, yeah, that's going to beat the Celtics? No, I don't yeah. think if you're the Heat, you can do it. I don't think that if you're the Heat, you could do that. I, I think it's just an absolute, I don't even think of it. I honestly don't even think it's a real, I don't think you even have to call, like, you don't even have to rent the the meeting room. Like, you don't even need to rent the conference room. 
if you're Pat Riley. You just do a quick text to Ellisberg, Simon, and Spo. And you're like, we're, we're not doing this, right? And everybody's like, no, 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 we're not doing this. Keep it moving. And you keep it moving. Um, we have one more trade idea here, though. Not involving Bam Adebayo, involving Miami's other star. Plus, is it time for Terry Rozier and Bam Adebayo to maybe change roles on the team? We'll talk about all of that and more as we continue. Would you on Locked on Heat? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now, new customers can bet just $5, just 5 bucks, and you get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL or pretty much anything all in one place. So sometimes you're watching a game. Who are the Dolphins playing this upcoming weekend? New England. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. We talked about it. They're already seven point favorites. So when you get a hunch, maybe you're watching that game and you know what? After Miami starts blowing them out early, you get a hunch. You want to check out the latest stats. You want to view live play by play from around the league. Well, you can do that and so much more all on the same page where you place your bets. But only when you visit FanDuel.com and join today, you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We'll be right back. Thanks again for making Locked On Eat your first listen of the day. The best way to support the show. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcast app. We're playing Would You here on Locked On Heat today. David, would you trade at this point Tyler Hero for Damian Lillard? Oh, oh. Again, that is, it's a very similar situation. You're looking at an aging superstar, Lillard, still capable of greatness, although far, you know, obviously far less frequently than at, at earlier stages of his career. Also getting paid a heck of a lot of money, significantly more than Tyler Hero. And while it's probably unlikely that Tyler will ever reach similar greats, he won't even have one season as great as Lillard's season, as Lillard's ever had. But I just cannot understand the idea of trading Tyler Hero when he's played so well this season, has done so many things so well and embraced the changes and, and weathered the storm of the last four or five seasons, et cetera. Like he's done everything you possibly can hope for with for the Heat franchise. And he just he I know he didn't live up to expectations, but I I don't think you can. I don't think you could trade him for Damon Lillard at this stage of his career. Have you proposed yep. that two years ago? Yeah, I could see that trade. In a heartbeat. That. Yeah. But given uh, what we've seen of Lillard over the last couple of seasons in Milwaukee, the fact he's getting paid 60-something million dollars, that that's difficult to stomach. And Lillard's different than he used to be. Like, we're not talking about prime Damian Lillard anymore. He could still reach these great heights where it's Dame time and all these things, and he still has the highlights. And by the way, scoring numbers are awesome for him this year. He's been very good for Milwaukee. Yes. He's not necessarily the problem. Not on the offensive side. Defensively, you think Tyler Hero's a problem? Watch some Damian Lillard game film over these last year, a couple of years. It's not great. Great. He's also 35 years old, making $52 million this year. He'll be 36 years old next year, making $54 million. Um, Tyler's 24, 25, making 29 million. He'll be 26 next year, making 31. 27 the year after, making 33. I know that contract looked a little rough when Tyler first signed it and when Miami was dealing with it, but in this new CBA, that's kind of the sweet spot, is you want these sort of 25, $30 million players uh, as like sort of satellites around your prime star, right? And Damian Lillard at this stage can't be that number one star. I don't think that that's in the cards for him anymore. And, and maybe it's not in the cards for Jimmy Butler either, but Dame doesn't have to be it when he's around Giannis. I think he would have to be that in Miami. I don't think Jimmy Butler is that player anymore either. So. You know, I, I think you're just spending a lot of money for fancy Tyler Hero and older Tyler Hero. And, you're, and is that worth twice as much money? Nobody's, disc nobody's saying that Tyler Hero is a flat-out better player than Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard right now is the better player than Tyler Hero. I don't think the margin is that wide, though. And it's certainly yeah. not, let's pay this guy who's 10 years older twice as much money wider. Like, it would be irresponsible. In today's CBA... You just can't afford to pay guys like that. And we're seeing, by the way, Milwaukee dealing with this. You have two, two guys making 50 plus million dollars and they can't for a lot of different reasons, not just financial sure. reasons, but they're having a hard time building 
a, a competent group and depth around that those two guys. It's you saw why Minnesota had to trade Carl Anthony Towns. You have to make a decision. Like who's going to be our guy? It's going to obviously it's going to be Anthony Edwards. We got to move on, and that's what happens. Can I so. can I add a caveat to the question? Mm, yeah. If it's a, if you make that trade and you guarantee one championship, but you still have to eat the cost of the contract and everything else, would you do it? Yeah, but I don't think it would even come close to that. Because the other part of this, this too, is that Miami would have to throw in more salary, and now sure. you're sacrificing depth because, like we just said, Tyler still got a making... championship at the end of the year. For however it's going to work out, as unlikely as it possibly can, in this dream scenario, if you wind up getting Lillard and a guarantee, I mean, you could say that about anything. Make that trade. Like, we... Yeah, of course. I wouldn't but do like... it. I wouldn't do it. I, I, you I'm wouldn't not, for I, a I'm championship? Not, no, I'm not rings culture. You know that. I don't care. That's true. I'm not rings culture. Um, would you bench Terry Rozier when he oh. returns? So we misspoke. Oh. I misspoke. I should say. Uh, sorry. On, uh, Were, was on was there more to that? I, you should have just. You could have ended the question halfway through there. All right. I just wanted. To, I wanted to clarify something. I, I misspoke um, on uh, on our post game show after the the Philadelphia win. That Miami's next game was Friday. The Miami's next game is Sunday at home yeah. against Dallas Mavericks. So they have a long break in between games here coming up. And uh, it's going to give Eric Spolstra some time to pause and reflect on what lineups that he wants to use. Miami's starting lineup, Tyler Hero, uh, Duncan Robinson, Jimmy Butler, Haywood Highsmith, Bam Adebayo against Philadelphia was a plus 12 in about 15 minutes. They were very good. And if I'm Eric Spolstra, I'm sticking with it. Not to, you know jump the gun here and answer the question before you got a chance, even though you already did. But yes, I, I'm with you. I would bench. Ter I would also bench Terry Rozier. I think that has basically been clear. My, it doesn't work. Terry Rozier and Tyler Hero do not work together. When those guys share the court, the, the Heat have a defensive rating of 116, giving up 116 points per 100 possessions. That would be 24th in the NBA this season. Not good enough. No, I, I like the idea of Rozier and Love. Like Love's a solid rebounder, et cetera. Your Rozier is still going to be able to attack the rim put pressure on the rim etc and so you you need competent rebounding out there so between jaime and love and rosier i think that's a good trio of guys that oh look i guess you'll have one person who's going to attack the rim ferociously and then you have two solid rebounders as well guys that will crash the glass and, and be able to turn those missed shots into offensive opportunities rather than just wasted possessions which is unfortunately what you're getting look i, I hate to say it because i think you and i were both pretty optimistic about Rozier and what he'd be able to do, that he'd be more on the the more efficient side of his, what, the career ledger, and it just hasn't been his strength. Like he's he's always struggled with this, and like he put up some really good numbers on a really bad Charlotte team last year, and we knew it was never going to translate directly apples to apples. But man, it's been apples to I, I don't crap pie. It's been really, really, really bad. So it's just it's unfortunate. Yeah, but. Uh, I, w I don't feel comfortable with him as a starter anymore. As much as I love the late game, the occasional late game heroics and the, the flashes that we see there, there's just too many missed shots to, and, and bad and defensive defensively, possessions. Yeah, and defensively he's a mess. And and look, players are who they are. And you could take a player out of Charlotte and put him in Miami and, and, and rub a bunch of heat culture all over his forehead and just say, be different. And eventually they're just going to be who they are, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that fit doesn't matter. Fit certainly matters, but... Terry, with guys like Terry Rozier, we're seeing this right now with the Lakers, with D'Angelo Russell, everybody, JJ Redick, I can change D'Lo, I could change D'Lo. How many, it, it's that Arrested Development meme. It, it didn't work It didn't work for them, but maybe it'll work for us. It, people have been doing that with D'Lo for years now. And yeah. to a certain extent, also Terry Rozier a little bit. And it just, it's not going to work. And, and in Los Angeles, they said, we're going to bench D'Angelo Russell. And by the way, he's thriving coming off the bench. I think Terry yeah. Rozier could play really well coming off the bench. He'll be the most overpaid sixth man in the league, but better to have an overpaid sixth man than an overpaid starter who's hurting your starting lineup, right? Like he's going to be overpaid regardless. So that's just what it is. And if he can thrive in that sixth man role and, and bring some juice to that bench lineup, I think that could really help, especially if you're able to maybe cut down on some of these Josh Richardson, Drew Smith, mm -hmm. Alec Burks, like where you're over relying on those guys and maybe Rozier can absorb some of that stuff and by the way his his efficiency his production would probably go up going up against backups as opposed to like the biggest baddest bestest players on yeah. the other team you know that stuff yeah. would help too um would you make bam the point guard and 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 that's sort of the, the headline here but to frame it with a little bit more nuance like bam's having a hard time finding his role in the offense 
And maybe that's because he's being miscast and they're still asking him to be a lead scorer in an offense that might not need him to be a lead scorer. We're going to explore that. We'll do a few more of these would you's uh, coming up after this on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. What's Prize Picks? Well, it's the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. They've made daily fantasy sports accessible to everyone. All you've got to do is pick more or less than the projections on two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. You can run your game all season long over at Prize Picks. And Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. You can join those over 10 million users and sign up today. They put their members first so that all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When your picks hit, you can get your money in as quick as 15 minutes. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play just five bucks. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. You think Steph Curry will get more than four three-pointers next week? Probably a good bet. You think Anthony Edwards is going to get more than 27 points? It all depends if Haywood Highsmith isn't guarding him. Cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this basketball season when you and your crew run your game on prize picks. Make sure to download the app today and use the code LOCKEDONNBA. You get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. That's download the app, use the code LOCKEDONNBA. You get 50 bucks instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Don't remember, don't forget, prize picks, run your game. We'll be right back. Thanks again for making Lockdown Heat your first listen of the day. Best way to support the show, like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcast app. Uh, David, would you make Bam the point guard of the offense? No. No, I would not. I just, I don't think that's the most efficient way of of unlocking Miami's offensive potential. Like I, We've seen possessions from them. It's, it's part of what makes this... Part of what makes the potential for this group so interesting is that you've got so many different guys that can initiate offense and playmaking and things of that sort. And Bam is just one of them. I don't know that putting him in that role specifically makes this offense much more dynamic than it's been over the course of the season. Where would he rank among passers on, on the, the team heat roster? Yeah. Second? I'd put him, I might put him. First fourth, or second. like fourth. I put him fourth. Yeah, I think so. Honestly, yeah. Uh, Hero, Jimmy, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and Rozier. I think Rozier's had some nice passes too. I think I might make him second behind Jimmy. Okay. I think he's consistently a more accurate passer. behind Jimmy. And, better than Tyler. Yeah, maybe. And Tyler's coming for it. So top three. Uh, but I guess the way I was thinking about it, and look, it, the Heat would never list him at point guard necessarily, but oh. point guard in the way that you know. Nikola Jokic is the point guard of Golden uh, of Denver's offense, the way Draymond is the point guard of Golden State's offense. Like you sure. just handle the ball. I would like to see Bam rip down those defensive rebounds and just bring the ball up the floor more and just set the table and get into less of these sets and less of this stuff and get into some more early offense. And that's what I want Bam to be doing. If that mid range shot is not going to be there for him, and, and and by the way, it should not be, mm-hmm. then what is his function in the offense? And the 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 kind of parking yourself on the the three point line and doing the the screen and roll and and the dribble handoff stuff is cute but I just want more of that like he's smart man like I I need less of that set stuff and and just let him go right let him right. go in early offense let him kind of get into a rhythm and in, into a a jaunt kind of up the court and and let him make those passes uh, while kind of getting towards the basket and collapsing the defense and all these things. I want to see more of that and more of that improvisation that I think he's very capable of. Some of the more of those like Kelly keepers and all that kind of stuff too. Like mm. I want more of that. And in Miami's five at offense, and if you're going to bench Terry Rozier, who has been a trigger in terms of the drive and kick portion of that offense, if you're going to bench him, I don't want Tyler Hero with the ball in his hands more. I like right. him on that catch and shoot stuff. That's where he's sure. thriving. The pull up stuff, all that stuff, that's good. The most efficient version of this is catch and shoot with a little bit of the pull-up stuff mixed in. Jimmy Butler, that's awesome when he scores 30 points against Philadelphia, but he took that game, A, personal, because it was the Sixers, and Tobias Harris over me and Joel Embiid and and all that kind of stuff. And number two, dude hasn't played in a a basketball game in 10 days, so he, he was a little bit more interested than he had been in previous games. So we know that we can't count on Jimmy Butler like that every single night. That's just the unfortunate reality. So considering that you're not going to get an engaged Jimmy Butler every single night and that you want Tyler Hero off the ball, and if we think Terry Rozier has to go to the bench, I don't know. I, I'm at the point where I'm like, I think Bam's role in this offense might just be 
you run it and score less. And if you're just like this hub, like this ace hub with like, you know, a 30% assist percentage where you're accounting for 30, like a third of Miami's total assist numbers, I, I think that's kind of interesting. Where are you going to get your scoring from, though? Like, I mean, you kind of still need him to put up numbers. Sure. I, mean, I know that's not mitigating him like, as you know, a score, but instead of like, what was he at like last year, like 20 and three, 20 and four over the last couple of years, sure. like maybe it's more sure. of like a 16 and six. 16 wow. and seven. It's not crazy different. No, no, but it, it feels like it feels like slippage to me. Like it feels like him evolving back to what he was earlier in his career. And that's doesn't yeah, feel like that's the, for him. It might be. It might be. I, I, I see your point. Um, I'm just not sure I'm ready to take away okay. the possibility of, of him being that score. And you know what? I mean, we, we, we said this after following the road trip. And he went and laid a dud yesterday. So I, it's just, I know he did a lot of other things well. So it's its not its not fair to bag on him completely. And people will say we're making excuses for him. But, you know, we've seen moments from him. We've seen him be a capable scorer. And the question has been, oh, can he continue this? Can he be consistent? Maybe you're right. Maybe it's just a, a matter of changing his role and then kind of letting him figure it out and having those opportunities come uh, less frequently and making right. the most of them when they do come. Yeah. Uh, would you add to this group or wait for the summer to make any changes? Oh boy, I mean that's a, what a loaded question, what an open-ended question. I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, what, what are we talking about here in terms of changing it? Would I make an addition to this group? Yeah, sure. But I mean, what's it going to cost and who's it for? I guess that's uh, this group clearly needs something, and I don't know if it's just a matter of addition versus uh, uh, by subtraction and getting rid of Rozier. You know, that's well, an assume, easy move to make. Assume no matter what you do is going to cost an asset, whether it's basically the one first round pick they can move or one of the young guys that you'd have to attach to something. Let's just assume whatever that move is, and and let and but and also another assumption: not Giannis, not like right, something. Right, right, right. You know, none of these things that we don't really actually think is coming on a scale of here. one to ten. How good is the player that you'd be getting back with 10 being MVP and one being, you know, out of the league? Um, I don't know, like a high level role player, like a, uh, I don't know, like a, like a like something slightly better than a Terry Rozier, like a Jeremy Grant type or something like a, like, like a definite, like solid starting caliber player forward. Uh, yes. Yes. I think that that's the right move. I, and I think and you look, we're already seeing. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Like, even if it costs you one of the young guys. Like Khalil isn't playing. Jaime Hawkins, I, I love him and I love his energy and I love talking to him. It's every, but I, you know, it's just, I don't, I don't know how much higher of a ceiling he's got. Like I, as enthusiastic as I am about what he's brought to the table, I, I don't know that he's ever going to be a superstar. Right. And if, mm -hmm. if it, you mean you can get a good quality role player, that's going to put you much closer to contention this year. Sure. Nico, same yeah. thing. Like, I mean, Yep. As if he could find a way to thrive somewhere else and you can get a high level role player in exchange, I think you make that move. Obviously, this question, and I know you were sort of searching for more nuance and specifics there, but like I, I don't know that like even the high level role player gets you closer to contention. I, I don't know that that does it for mm -hmm. you this year. So I I would just wait. I would wait for the summer. Unless that role player coming in is just a, like a slam dunk fit, not next to oh. Jimmy Butler, but next to Bam and Tyler and what oh. we think the score is going forward. And is young enough to be like, you know, 26, 25, 27, kind of in that age range, and it costs you one of the young guys, then I would at least think about it. But if it's like a if it's like a Terry Rozier type and maybe even a little bit better, but 29, 30, 31 years old, I'm just not mm -hmm. doing it. I don't because I don't think that's the window for this team anymore after this year. And and, and I I'm done kind of I don't I don't think I like I tell I, I'm not breaking. I think the Heat's window is closed. It doesn't mean I don't think that I'm not rooting for this team to win games. And I don't think that there's a version of, of this team that could be a lot of fun. But I am I also have zero championship expectations from this group this season. So, yeah, why add to it? Why? Why cost some? Why, why, you know, pay up something that you could use later on? Last one. Would you pull a Mavericks? What I mean by that is if you're with if, if the Heat are within a few games of the play in tournament and they have to make a decision in April, like, OK, are we going to go for the it, it's kind of clear that we're a play in team. Do we go and stay in the play in mix or do we even try for like the sixth seed or something? Or do we go the other way and maybe tank the way the Mavericks did a couple years ago and it ended up getting them Derek Lively in the draft? Um, the only reason I bring this up, David, is Miami owes a first round pick to Oklahoma City next summer. That's top 14 protected. 
So if they miss uh-huh. the playoffs, they keep their pick. That pick is also unprotected in 2026. So there is some risk if you kick that can down the road into the summer of 2026. But this 2025 class is widely heralded as maybe one of the best classes in recent memory. So, you know, you're not going to get Cooper Flag with a top 14 pick, although you'll be in the lottery, so who knows. Uh, but uh, probably not still. Nobody's ever gone from 14 to, like, number one. But, um, you know, some potential to get a good player there. Would you pull a Mavericks if it meant, like, all right, Really, we're going to do play-in for the third year in a row? I think you know the answer to that question. For me, anyway, I absolutely it's would. Like, yeah, I think so. Like, I mean, I, I, I look, I was you, – you were there. I remember you and I being there uh, when they lost to – what was it, Atlanta? Uh, that year that they went – 2023. Yeah, the incredible run to the finals. And, like, we saw them get beat, and they just looked like they didn't care. And we were like – and the season already like we knew that they were going to face chicago and as optimistic i had as i had been all season i just they didn't seem like they cared they didn't seem like they were going to be able to do anything and yet they did and it was magical and fantastic and it was that run with max Struess and, and against chicago in the next playing game and then from there you go all the way to the nba finals like the opportunity for that however unrealistic it might be you go for it every time uh and you can't do that just so you can get a spot or two better in the draft well, it's not a spot or two better in the draft. It's have a pick or not. Hmm. Well, either way, then. Yeah, I don't care. You know, I hate the draft anyway. <laughs> um. Do you care what I think, or do you know what I think? I, I know you. You would take. Yeah. I don't know. I would have to think about it. That unprotected in twenty twenty six with yeah, the Jimmy tough. Butler situation looming. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe we just we just eat it and not take have a, a pick chance in this draft yeah. because right in twenty twenty six, like this could be a top five pick. We have no idea, right? Like. This that could be really tough. So that that would be very hard. And I think, you know, the way the Heat have uh, behaved is don't tempt the basketball gods if you don't have to. Right. Um, right. And I don't right. think that they would necessarily. But um, right. And by the way, the East is so bad that I don't think this is going to be. A, I think the Heat could still end up with one of the top six seeds in top the East. Four. That's yeah. not even, yeah top three. I don't know. Um, Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in tomorrow. We'll be joined by Rohan Nadkarni to talk more Miami Heat. A reminder that your favorite podcast now is a newsletter. Introducing the Locked on Heat Daily Newsletter. One stop for ultimate team and league coverage. Delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com. And start your day with the all-new free Locked on Heat Newsletter. 